If we pull up a list of all the jungle camps and ask which one of these is best, you might initially want to use a value like gold to determine that. Just based off of raw value alone, Krugs are the best and Raptors the worst. So what about experience? Well, Krugs are still the best and Raptors still the worst. So what gives? Why do all high yellow junglers know that Raptors are actually the most broken camp? Even though by all the metrics we've just shown, it's by far the worst. If you have absolutely no idea, buckle up and let's explore why Raptors are the best jungle camp in League of Legends. Before we get into that though, you've probably wondered to yourself, is skill capped really worth it? Well, let's find out. So what rank were you before you started skill capped? So I was bronze, but I think I was working my way back down to iron. May have been high silver, but I think I was gold. And what's the highest rank that you've achieved so far while using skill capped? I've got several accounts I've hit gold on. I'm in two. Is there anything skill capped helped you learn that would have taken you longer otherwise? If I keep track of where that enemy jungler is, uh, he's on the other side of the map and he's it looks like he's ganking by bot lane and I'm on the top side of the map. Uh, I can't get there in time, so there's no way I can impact that. I'm going to go seal his topside camps or I'm going to grab Rift now. Just lots of ideas like, hey, I'm strong early, I'm Lee Sin. Let's like analyze all the lane matchups and go to a lane where I have Pryo and Invade. Like that's not something I would be doing on my own every game, but that is something I'm doing because of skill cap. When I played League before skill caps, I was sort of playing and feeding my way around. Um, and then after coming across skill caps and trying it for a little while, during one of the videos, I think, a sudden click of, hold on a second, this is not, this is not just a game of running around and, and killing people. This is a game about strategy. This is a game about moving the pieces so that the future becomes predictable and then acting on that future. So what are you waiting for? Get real results at skillcap.com. Link in the description below. Now back to the video. Let's start out by looking at an example game from Plat Elo and following along with a Volley Bear. The game starts out relatively normally with Volley Bear starting his blue buff. However, the enemy Shaco actually shows in our bot side jungle with our red, and he's taking our Krugs too. This leads to Volley wanting to take action, and he goes to counter jungle the enemy top side, successfully stealing away the red buff. At this point of the game, both junglers have made massive mistakes. If you don't know what, don't worry. By the end of this guide, you will. One of the main strengths of the Raptor camp is proximity. Let me explain. Having access to multiple points on the map and the ability to potentially be anywhere is a jungler's greatest strength. I mean, think about why Evelyn is so frustrating to play against. You kind of have to assume she's everywhere because she's invisible, and that's annoying. When you know exactly where she is, her ganks and presence aren't all that threatening. There are many other junglers that are just better at brute forcing and skirmishing than she is. I'm definitely more scared of a Nunu snowballing at me than an Eve just walking at me. So what am I getting at? Evelyn's threat comes from unpredictability and the idea that you rarely know what she's up to. Other junglers don't get this for as free as she does, but we can still tap into it. If we're always ready to react to plays or counter what our opponents are doing, it can feel kind of like we're everywhere, even though we aren't. So what lets us do this and feel like we're everywhere? We can't literally do that, but we can do the next best thing. We can be as close to everything as possible. Why is Volibear even allowed to walk in and take the red in the first place here? If we look at how far apart Shaco and Volley are, the answer should be quite obvious. Shaco just can't stop him. After taking our red at the start of the game, Shaco really only had two choices for which camp he was going to do next, our Krugs or our Raptors. From the golden XP chart we saw earlier, Krugs seems like the obvious answer, but if we think about what Shaco could access if he were just closer to things, maybe Raptors starts to look a bit more appealing. If Shaco went from red to Raptors, he would be extremely close to mid, and would even be able to pop over the wall and gank Yasuo should he so choose. The real benefit of this is that it stops our counterplay. If our mid laner is pressured early and Shaco crosses back to his red side, we don't have a way of trading back the red that we lost at level one. And suddenly this game is very different. Raptors are just kind of close to everything. 
It's not just that they're in a central location on the map and therefore have the fastest routes to other things. I mean, that's a huge bonus, but the pathways going from raptors to other places are just the best gank paths too. What do I mean by best gank paths? Well, do you know which mid gank is better? The one that comes from the right or the left? The one that comes from the left in this case is better. There are a few reasons. This wall, well, it's just thin in comparison to the other side. This is much larger, and as a consequence, takes a lot longer to go around. There are plenty of movement abilities that can't make it over the ladder wall, while they can over the first. These two factors mean that sometimes you just can't get to ganks in time from this side because you have to go all the way around this hunk of terrain. When it comes to ganks, thinner terrain is just superior. Another reason is that vision isn't equal on both sides. That tower in mid lane, it's not actually in the middle. This means that when you're coming from the left side, you get seen much later than in comparison to if you gank from the right. This means that the enemy laner has less time to respond to you and less time to live. The side that's further away from the tower is the better gank path. It's not just on blue side that this is true. If we think from the other side, everything is still true. This wall, thicker than this wall. This tower, it spots you closer on the left side than the right. And look what the commonality is between both sides that are better. You guessed it, raptors are on that side. If we look at what kinds of routes we can get coming from raptors, we have a bot gank that comes in from the furthest point behind the enemy lane, and the better gank path onto mid. From blue side, if you're trying to gank mid or top from the enemy raptors, you'll find the same thing. You get right behind the lane, you want to gank, and you have the better gank onto mid. If we compare this to where the gank path from wolves gets us, well, it's not as good. It's barely halfway into the lane. Ganking mid from wolves? Yeah, forget about it. It's not impossible or always bad, but it is much harder than doing it from raptors. If all this talk about terrain got you thinking, let me answer that question. Yes, there is more terrain that matters. When you're invading for jungle camps, we usually need to secure an exit path. The worst thing that can happen is that we get flanked from multiple angles and find ourselves with nowhere to run. There's a reason why I showed wolves as the example here. If you want an exit route from this camp to retreat towards your base, we've got an issue. That is a massive wall right in the way of your escape. And the terrain here, it's really annoying to get out from without getting collapsed on like we just saw. Well, what about Grom? Exact same problem. Big ass wall, two ways out, perfect for getting flanked. Krugs, yep, big wall, perfect spots for enemies to come flank and no easy way to safety. So, Raptors, straight shot to freedom and really hard to punish. This is why Raptors is the only camp you can just walk into the enemy jungle and try to contest whilst barely knowing where anyone is. You have a straight line escape to safety at almost all times. We get comments like this sometimes in guides where I take away the enemy raptors. A lot of players seem to think that it's a huge risk to try and counter jungle, especially if it's an unknown if the camp is there. So to address this, let's go look at high elo. If we pull up a challenger game, you'll see how this all combines to make going towards a raptor camp just a safe bet, even when it isn't up. Both junglers in this game just cleared towards topside, and they ultimately end up fighting over crab. Lee loses the exchange and his mid laner dies in the skirmish, but it does give him access to his opponent's bot side. He's now able to walk in towards the raptor area, and when he sees the camp is down, we still have those amazing gank angles on mid and bot. While he may not have a raptor camp to take away, it just doesn't matter. Going to raptors is such a small commitment because the terrain just gives such a huge advantage when it comes to doing other things. He's able to easily get an angle on bot lane to snipe a kill with Q. Raptors is just the camp when it comes to transitioning to pretty much any other play on the map afterwards. Part of the reason why Krugs is worth so much gold and XP, well, it's really far away from sh They have to try and balance it somehow. I mean, when the terrain is so terrible it only gives access to one lane and has bad access to river, it better be worth gold and XP. 
even though it is worth all this stuff, I just find myself thinking, ugh, I can't go to Krugs here or I'm just going to be too far away to react to a mid gank. Let's go look at that Volley Bear example again. While Volley is doing red and taking away something from his opponent, he's not really thinking about proximity to other stuff. Yasuo is perma-fighting mid during this, and just imagine if either jungler decided to show up at any point. This could have easily gone either way. Volley could have been at enemy raptors instead of red, which would have let him come from behind and potentially counter gank or just gank, and Shaco could have done the same thing, like I mentioned earlier. Being at red just doesn't give us that option. When Volley does decide to go to raptors, one of the main reasons why it's usually good just doesn't exist anymore. We don't need proximity to mid because there's no more play. Yasuo's already dead. So where should he be exactly? Looking at top, Draven is completely destroying Garen right now, and even had the opportunity to play several more axes of damage onto him here. If this isn't a free dive that just makes Garen miss 2 plus waves and cry, I don't know what is. Ironically, Krugs is actually where Volibear wants to be now. The fact that he's not using the camps to have closer proximity to lanes that might need influencing just shows me how misunderstood this whole concept actually is. Both junglers throughout this weren't thinking about multiple plays. They were tunnel visioned on one idea and not ready to react to others that might happen. So when you're trying to place a value on what camps are worth or just trying to figure out what to do, remember this guide and recall that gold and XP aren't everything. Sometimes it's something as simple as just being close to something else that makes all the difference. All right, guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about skill cap. So we offer a five division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week with over 1600 guides curated into over 100 courses no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.